Hey guys, this is Ryan from Spiker Workshop, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the stock blizzard plow with either the front or rear mount. This whole assembly video is basically identical on the front and rear. So to get started, we'll take the, the old front plate from the blizzard. It has these two like um, knuckles on there. What we we'll want to do is unscrew these and then we're going to move them to basically right here and here. So to make it easier to actually install these, what you probably want to do is unscrew the, the orange mount from here. Take out I believe it's four screws, the top two and the bottom two that are going into the orange mount. So here I have the screws removed from the orange mount. You don't need to take it all the way out, just enough so you can get the screwdriver angled in there to tighten down those. You can use the original screws that came with those. So here we have the finished thing here of the those brackets installed. And it, this is if you wanted to attach the plow to the front, otherwise if you wanted it in the rear, it's, you know, the exact same thing except these holes. So the next thing you want to do is, in the instruction manual, you can see we, we use a different assortment of the linking arms. These two ones shown here are the ones that are already attached to the plow. But you can see in our diagram here, it says L3, and then these are the L3 ones. You want to, you want maybe you want to take these off so you can do it easier, but you want to just put a bend on the end of these, both of these. And what that does is it allows it to basically bend underneath this bar. And then after you bend those, you'll also want to... Um, we need to take it apart a little bit. This L1 rod is supposed to go on this metal bar here. So what we want to do is unscrew both of these screws and both of these so we can get access to this bar. So here you can see I've bent both bars and then we have this ready for the next step. Now in your snowblower kit there will be a bag that says rod for stock plow. I know a couple of people were confused on what this was for. And it's basically this rod here that we'll be putting on that bar. So to get this rod ready, um, we have to put the balls in each of those and then screw each end onto there. So to put the balls on, use a wrench. And then we'll screw each one on each end of this. So here I have the finished rod. And I also went ahead and bent it to the shape that it shows in the instruction manual, the L1. And then, actually I forgot, um, we're supposed to leave one of these balls out actually. So I have to pop that back out. So the end without the ball, we're going to be sliding over this tube here, just like that. And then this thing we're going to remove. This was the original part that comes with this. We don't need that anymore. And then we'll go ahead and screw this stuff back in. So this is what it should look like when it's all ready to go. So then the next thing we want to do is connect it. First thing you want to do is these clips here. Those will clip onto that metal bar that's in there. Takes a little bit of force to get them on there. 
And if you were doing the opposite mount, you'd want to clip those bars onto these plastic bits right here. So then we want to take the, there's a little plastic bag that comes with the plow. These two screws are what we'll use to connect both of these bars basically underneath here like this. So we'll use those screws to connect those two. So this is how it looks with both of those those rods attached right here and here. So the next we want to do is this rod you want to bend so that that angles facing upwards like that and then the screws that were kind of left over with your front and rear mounts these were left in there so this is what we'll use to actually connect the linkage to the control arm here it's the 440 by 1 inch pan and a 440 lock nut so here's what it should look like for the final setup. So now we gotta kinda calibrate it. So if if when the, the servo retracts it doesn't lift it up very high, what there's two things you can do. Um, one is remove this bolt and then twist those two control rod ends closer together so it makes it shrink. That'll kind of lift it up farther. And then you could also do the exact same thing with this linkage rod here. Take one of these off and then screw them together so it makes it, you know, uh, more, or you know, smaller. And then if you do both of those together it'll give you a lot more reach to lift it up in the air. So let me do that really quick. I tightened up this one quite a bit now. It's actually probably a quarter inch shorter. And now you can see when I use the servo that it lifts the blade up in the air pretty much as much as it would need to. I think it's about almost an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. And then it still has enough throw downwards to lift the snowcat up a little. So I would say that's pretty good. You can see a an up close of exactly how I got the linkage set up. And you could still adjust it more to bring it up more, but I think this is pretty good. And then when you want to use your snow blower, you'll basically have to remove three screws, these two here and then this one, and then pop those out of those joints, and then you can fit the snow blower right in its place. Or another thing you can do is I design these mounts so you could use the snow blower on one end while you're using the plow on the other end. So you could basically go in reverse to use the plow or forwards to use the snow blower. Kind of gives it, you know, a lot more um, useful functions. So that's also another reason if you were deciding whether or not to buy this kit to get both front and rear. It just gives you a lot more flexibility with the whole blizzard. So that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching guys.